Oh, All right. Good afternoon, Zimbabwe. Uh, I'm a doctor. I'm age 26. I recently finished college. I finished uh, last year. Uh, that is in December. I started college, I think, uh, that about six years ago. I've been in medical school and I finished last year. So this year I started my internship. And uh, as a doctor, this is my, these are my views as a citizen of Zimbabwe. I'm talking as a citizen of Zimbabwe, not as a doctor. I'll talk about it as a doctor later on. But uh, I think uh, the future, especially for citizens, uh, is very bleak. Looking at everything that's happening in Zimbabwe, okay, I'll talk from my personal point of view. Looking at uh, since January when I started working up to now, it's, uh, it's almost seven months now I've started working. And this has been my dream to be a doctor, to achieve everything that I want, at least to, to set a step that will push me to go levels higher. But my view, my view I think, uh, the future of Zimbabwe is very bleak. Looking at everything, looking at, uh, we start the way citizens are treated right now at the moment. I think we are dealing with a system that does not care about its citizens, a system that does not care about the future of young people, a system that does not care about the welfare of its own people. I mean, they say they are looking after us. How are they looking after us when they, when they don't care what I eat today? They don't care what I'm wearing today. They don't care about my future. Look, the future is very bleak. Why am I saying that? Because I'm a young doctor already. I'm thinking of leaving Zimbabwe. I've been working. I've been studying for six years. But seven months down the line working here, I'm already thinking about leaving Zimbabwe. I should be here. This is where I should be putting back everything that I got. I got everything from Zimbabwe. This is where I started my academic career. This is where I got all my talents. So I should be giving back that. But look now, I'm already thinking of leaving. But we are dealing with a system that does not care and then we come up we raise our contents and then we tell them okay right now we're saying we are incapacitated as doctors we can't go to work this is legit and look at me right now we're earning about 70 us dollars the current black market exchange rate and even the interbank exchange rate is such that our currencies are way below 100 us dollars 100 usd look i'm a doctor i have a lot of family here i have uh, extended family they want me to be taking care of them there's no way i'm going to leave my mama who's going to take care of her hospital bills of my mom? my parents are old who's going to take care of their hospital bills i need to be paying for them who's going to pay for my sibling who needs, who still needs to go to school he still needs education but i'm only earning 80 us dollars i need to pay rent i need to eat at the same time i need to go to work i need to report for work and save lives we, i'm a doctor and i swore that i would be saving lives for the rest of my life but look now i can't do all that and what i am simply saying is telling the government that okay i'm incapacitated i'm unable to go to work for seven months now we've been subsidizing the government sometimes we go to the extent of borrowing money we borrow money we borrow money for our parents the same thing that i used to do when i was still in college every morning i'd knock at my parents door to say i need money i only hide I'm behind the same thing that I don't have cash, I need money, I'll, I'll probably just throw me a few bucks so that I can get back to work, I'll give you back later on. But then the truth is, I don't have the money. I don't have the money. That's the truth. And every day I knock at my mom's door, say, okay, mom, can I have this money transport fee every day? And she was paying my fees for the past six years. And now she's thinking, at least I'm able to support myself. At least I'm able to, to cater for all that. But still it's happening. So what kind of a country is it that we are, we are only saying, okay, look, these are our complaints. Please hear us. And what happens? But look at their response. We're saying, these are our complaints. Please hear us. They send people. They start sending threats. And they abduct one of us. What, what, what kind of a country is that? I mean, what, what kind of people are we dealing with here? I mean, seriously. And this, this is what, what, what brought us here today. We are saying, okay, if you're not going to hear us, then who's going to hear us? The only way, the only thing they know is violence. You abduct a person, you send threats messages. Look, we just want to talk. Let's go on the negotiating table. Let's hear what you have to say. Hear us and then we, 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 we find a common line. But, but it's not making sense. So the future is very bleak. Let me be honest. The future is very bleak. And I'm talking as, as, as a young person. I recently finished college. As a young doctor and I'm saying already I want to leave this country. Already I feel like I have nothing to do with this country. And yet everything that I got I feel like I have to give back to the same society. But already I have a lot of resentment and I can't continue like this. So this is the problem that we have. This is the problem that we have. And talking as a doctor, even the hospitals that we're working. Imagine a central hospital. You got to the point of you, it's, it's, it's actually very funny. A central hospital, you don't have a needle. I'm talking of a simple needle to draw blood. You don't have cannulas, drips. How are you going to treat our patients? It's, 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 it's unbelievable. It's incredulous when I say this. And, and when, we talk, and when we talk out there, we we, we be saying, please, yes, come and uh, listen to our story. I really appreciate uh, having this platform to be able to say our story to the world there. Say, come and, and, and listen to us. Come and hear what we have to say. But our concerns are really genuine. They're really authentic. Our concerns are out there and we're saying, please, just hear us. But the future of Zimbabwe, 
It's very bleak. Mm -hmm. And we, we're not going anywhere, to be honest. We're not going anywhere. I think we're dealing with a system that does not care about its citizens. We're dealing with a system that does not, it does not care about us. It does not care about the welfare of the, of the ordinary Zimbabwean out there who can't afford medical care. It does not care about that. They don't care. And the future is very bleak.